Good afternoon. Today, I would like to share some very practical information about how we should prepare to start the IVF procedures. Now, the IVF procedures really consist of two major parts. Uh, first part is a preparation for egg retrieval and production of good quality embryos. And second part is preparing the body for the embryo transfer. So let's discuss the first part. Now I know that we already know about what IVF is all about, take the egg out, mix with sperm, make embryos. We also know that it involves certain kind of medical medications. But today I want to just discuss more about the practical issues. So let's start with the IVF first. So before start an IVF cycle and after your physician discuss with you say your next step will be recommend move on for to IVF and if you also think you're ready then I think we need to think about a couple of practical issues first of all we also need to just kind of ask us how long the whole process might take so you can check your schedule if you have any uh, travel plans if you're gonna be away or if you have some kind of family reunion it's already been scheduled, you should make sure that the data not conflict with the IVF treatment cycle. So very important to ask how long does it take. Usually take a four to six weeks from the time to start the preparation to the time to take the egg out. So that's very important first thing. And the second thing is always check with our billing department and talk to your insurance company to find out what will be the fee schedule and if your insurance will cover or how much will cover so you can just kind of have an idea about the coverage and the financial aspect and number three make sure you are also get a pharmacy content your medicine is prepared ordered by our nurses and also you want to make sure all the other things ready such as the screen tests that's including genetic screen and infectious disease screen. You make sure all the screen tests are done and then make sure you and your husband send all the appropriate consent forms for the procedure, upcoming procedures. And during signing this consent form, that's the last opportunity for you to get to know the process, what you are going through. Now, in our center, we also have an orientation class, which is happening and take, takes place every Wednesday lunchtime and while it's not mandatory but it's a highly recommended the orient, orientation class is really to have the nurses and the embryologists to present about 30 to 45 minutes slides presentations which explain to you in more details of every single step about how to take a medicine how to get the injections and what each bit may take what it will egg look like, what it will be embryo look like, and how to clean sperm, when to clean sperm, and what is exactly the technique about the embryo freezing, how to understand the quality, the stage of embryos. So this is a very useful orientation. Now, of course, the most important part from a medical point of view is to sit and discuss with the physician to pick up the right protocol for you. Now, ladies who are undergoing IVF cycles can range from age 21 to age 45. The ladies' ovarian potential can potentially make 20, 30 eggs per cycle versus some ladies only making one or two eggs. And the quality egg can range from a lady at age 25, maybe more than 50% of the embryos produced will be chromosomally normal and have more than 80% chance to get you pregnant in each case while the lady the, at the age of 45 more than 90% of the embryo will show abnormal chromosomes and the implantation rate meaning the chance each embryo will get you pregnant without doing genetic screen test will be only 5-10% to 10%. so with such kind of variation of course there are isn't a single protocol will fit in for all the ladies and that's why we have five very basically different kind of stimulation protocols. 
from natural cycle without taking any medications to conventional IVF, you were taking heavy daily injections, and there is a variation in between with only taking oral pills or oral pills with injection. So we need to sit and discuss based on your previous history and what we learn from your cycle. Then we're gonna decide what protocol will be most optimal protocol for you, such as conventional IVF stimulation protocol, or minimal stimulation IVF protocol, or ultra minimal stimulation IVF protocols, or you should go simple natural cycle IVF, as I said, not any medication. And so this all needs to be discussed and determined before the cycle starts. And also, second part I want to discuss, if we do get egg, should we get egg fertilized and transfer back right away, doing so-called fresh embryo transfer? Should we get egg, make embryos, and then we'll freeze the embryos, and we can do different kind of testing and do transfer later? Should we do the embryo transfer or freezing when the embryo reached to three days old, so-called day three embryos? Or should we wait until the embryo reach to five to six days old, so-called day five, day six embryos? This all should be discussed and based on your age, based on your plan, based on your previous history of IVF success case or failure cases, we will decide what will be most optimal strategic plan. So this all needs to be worked out before the IVF cycle starts. The protocol is indeed very important because Mainly determining fact of embryo egg quality is based on your age and how you are prepared, stimulated, and, and when the eggs are retrieved. So these are very, very important uh, aspects. Now I would like to talk about embryo transfers. So embryo transfer, meaning that everything is ready, your endometrium is ready, your embryo is ready, and that's time we're going to do embryo transfer. So first let's talk about what do you mean embryo is ready. Embryo ready means IVF procedure is done and embryo already made it to day three or day five as we agreed upon at the beginning of the cycle. This embryo could be fresh, could be frozen. In most of the case, now we do frozen embryo transfer, which I'll explain to you later why a frozen embryo transfer is better than fresh embryo transfer. And also, at that time, we also will know whether your endometrial environment is ready for transfer, meaning that the timing is right. The physical structure of the endometrial cavity is ready. So, for that perspective, I would like to discuss the following. So, there is a specific window that embryo will be most likely implant. That's called implantation window. And that's usually typically three to five days, if typically five to six days after you ovulate. So that's why embryo transfer usually will be timed at that time for the transfer. And we are doing blood work, ultrasound work, and we'll figure out when the right time. And the, structurally, we will do measurement to look at the shape and the so-called thickness of your endometrium, the covering cell of the uterine cavity. We want to make sure you reach a certain thickness. Usually, is from seven millimeter to 11 millimeters. And some patients may not make it that far, they may, and which may not even make it to 7.5. And we need to discuss should we do transfer or should we cancel the transfer. But ideally, we would like to have an in thickness around 7.5 to about 9.5 millimeter. It's a perfect situation. And when this accomplished, embryo is ready, then we're going to do transfer. Usually, this kind of situation will be much easier and better accomplished if we are doing frozen embryo transfer, because we already have embryo ready, we can just focus on the timing of endometrium without worrying about the synchronization of the embryos with the endometrial environment. So natural cycle, a fresh cycle is usually a little bit difficult because you never know whether when the embryo is ready, your endometrium will be ready or vice versa. And other things I want to talk about, uh, what about uh, anything to change your lifestyle when you're ready for embryo transfer. Practically, no any change in your lifestyle to the embryo transfer, and there's no restriction of your daily activity, food diet, and you actually encourage to have intercourse until embryo transfer. There are many studies in the animal show that the natural intercourse, the deposit of a seminal plasma in the uterine environment, may launch certain kind of immunological 
reaction which you will be in favor for the embryo implantation. So you totally do not need to be straight from intercourse immediately before the embryo transfer. After embryo transfer, usually we recommend it that not to have intercourse until confirm you're pregnant, until you reach to six to nine weeks pregnancy. After embryo transfer, usually we recommend it that not to have intercourse until confirm you're pregnant, until you reach to six to nine weeks pregnancy. And uh, you absolutely do not want Commit yourself to bed rest or prolonged bed rest after embryo transfer. Studies show there's no any benefit, but may actually compromise the child to get pregnant because when you lie down, when you slow down your physical activity, you will slow down your blood and circulation, which is very important for providing enough nutrition to the implantation side for the embryo. So that's why we do not encourage you to restricts you from a routine physical activity. Another thing you may find if some patient already undergo in vitro fertilization and then they may realize, maybe they may remember before the embryo transfer, immediately before embryo transfer, sometimes they are instructed to hold their urine. And this is actually the very difficult things to do um, because you already very anxious about embryo transfer, meanwhile you have to hold your urine and you're worried about you need to go and if you go you're worried about you don't have enough urine retained. So this is a very difficult part. First of all, why do you need to keep the full blood? The reason for two, A, sometimes we'll push the cervix down, make the transfer a little bit easy. And the secondly, major reason is that this is the only way we'll enhance the transabdominal ultrasound scan to find the position of your cervix. That's how the physician want to get the guidance from ultrasound image to know where and how far to go with a catheter which will eventually deliver the embryos. Now, in our center, we use a very unique technique and we accomplish the same results with a special technique of ultrasound but you do not need to keep your blood. So you can go to the bathroom anytime you want. Actually, we encourage you to empty your blood before embryo transfer. It just makes the whole process much easier. So this is just some very practical uh, questions or issues I want to, our patient to be aware and to be prepared. It will help to make the whole process a much smoother and uh, make the whole process a good experience. Thank you. Bye.